This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Richard Antrobus talks about his research in the development of a universal flu vaccine. Hello Richard. Hello. Why do some people need a flu jab every autumn? Uh, well, the reason that you need a flu jab every autumn is that influenza has seasonal peaks and troughs. So flu doesn't really circulate very much in the summer. And then having the flu jab in September or October allows you to develop some immunity for when flu is really circulating in the winter. Um, the reason why that needs to be repeated every year is that one of the problems is that the flu virus changes very rapidly. So that the immunity that you develop one year won't necessarily help to protect you the following year. And then why do only some people get the flu jab? Well, we know that it's more serious to get flu um, if you're elderly or if you've um, got a certain medical condition like heart failure. So the vaccination programme is specifically targeted at, at those at-risk groups. And how does the universal flu vaccine actually work? So a universal flu vaccine is one that can provide protection against a broad range of influenza strains. Um, there are many different ways to try and achieve that, and ours is just one vaccine in development, one candidate for that in development. Um, what they all have in common, all universal flu vaccine candidates, is although I've said that some of the um, parts of the flu virus change rapidly, there are actually other parts of the virus that are relatively stable year on year, and they're also relatively the same between different strains of flu. So universal vaccines uh, target the immune system at those relatively stable parts of the virus. Um, our vaccine specifically um, works by um, stimulating a type of cell called T cells. Um, and these T cells recognise a couple of key uh, internal proteins from within the flu virus. That has some issues, so um, T cells to some extent will decrease more rapidly over time as opposed to things like antibodies which more conventional vaccines um, utilise. Um, and then another question is will universal vaccines be able to replace the normal seasonal flu jab? Um, that's certainly the ultimate goal um, but it's, that's going to be particularly challenging. Our vaccine candidate is designed to protect against um, different strains uh, within influenza A but there's also an influenza B, so um, a truly universal vaccine will be need to cross both of those strains, which I think will be quite difficult. And when will it be available for everybody? So it's difficult to say with any certainty. Um, roughly it takes about 10 years to um, take a vaccine from the early stages of clinical development through to being licensed for generalised use. Um, rather than a truly universal vaccine um, bringing onto the market, I think it's more likely that we'll see a series of vaccines being released, um, each of which will provide more and more protection against a broader and broader range of influenza strains. And what are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? H5N1, avian influenza, um, has been very important over the last ten years. Um, initially cases were reported in Hong Kong and mainland China, but it's not a disease that's gone away. In, in fact, it's spread progressively further and further west. So even last year, um, Egypt reported some cases where people had died from H5N1 uh, influenza. Um, and so a lot of the work's been looking at um, how the immune responses that we get to that strain, how those interact and relate to immune responses that we get to um, more, more conventional strains of flu. Um, but for us developing universal vaccines, um, another important line of research in the last few years has been with trying to identify the particular, what particular parts of the flu virus are going to be the important targets for our universal vaccines. So why does your line of research matter and why should we put money into it? Well vaccine research matters a lot. If you think about where we'd be without vaccines, we'd still be faced with um, polio epidemics and smallpox and measles. Um, sometimes progress with one vaccine can help develop other vaccines. So for example if people discover an adjuvant that works with a vaccine or discover an, um, a new manufacturing process for a vaccine then that can help the field in general. 
Flu itself is a very important disease. So uh, the World Health Organization estimates that between a quarter of a million and half a million people worldwide die of flu each year. And there's good evidence that um, flu vaccines can prevent disease. So our line of research is very important because um, it might help to save lives in the future. Um, finding a universal vaccine though is particularly important because of the inevitability of the next pandemic. In the 20th century we had three pandemics with Spanish flu being the most severe. The 2009 swine flu epidemic was um, relatively less severe but it's only a matter of time before the next severe pandemic comes along. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? So translational medicine is about taking findings from the laboratory and using them to help develop better treatments for patients. Uh, in the flu group we've got both scientists and clinicians working alongside each other and it's with that um, integrated multidisciplinary approach that the best ideas can get fast tracked through. So even in the short time that I've been working in the group um, I've been able to use data from the laboratory to help me design um, a new clinical trial where we've tested a novel combination of vaccines for the first time in people. So I think vaccine research is very much a part of translational medicine. Thank you, Richard. Thank you.